So hopefully you've got your EV and you're at a point where you're starting to get comfortable with charging it, both at home if that's an option for you and on the public network. The next step might be to learn about how you can save money on public charging. Public charging is expensive, especially in the UK. So today I'll run through some tips on how you can save money whilst using it. What options are available for making it a bit more cost effective? Public charging is not cheap. At some of the prices we're currently seeing, public charging makes running an EV as expensive as running an ICE car, if not more so. However, there are a few cheat codes that can make it a bit more reasonable, so I'll go through those in order. All of the pricing I'll be discussing today is UK specific and applicable in May 2025. However, the general approaches and mindsets should apply to most countries. Our networks and infrastructure are a bit specific to us, but the general concepts should apply almost everywhere. If my non-UK viewers have anything that is specific to their countries, then please leave those in the comments so that other people from those areas can benefit from your experience. Keep an eye out for additional information in those comments after the video is released. The first step in the savings ladder is to see if you can avoid public charging by driving more efficiently. If you're doing a journey where you're close to finishing your journey without having to stop, then using some of the efficiency tricks might help you make it without stopping at all. I've already done a video on the way to get more efficiency from your EV, so have a watch of that if you don't know what I mean. I'll leave a link to that video from the end screen of this one, as well as in the description. The second step in the savings ladder is to limit the amount of charge added. It might seem obvious, but as we're used to brimming a petrol or diesel car each time we fill up, it's easy to continue with that mindset when you switch to an EV, but that doesn't have to be your approach. In fact, what we want to do is put in the minimum energy we need to get somewhere cheaper. With a small buffer, of course, we don't want to run out. But the point is, if you are at an expensive charger, then put in only what you have to. Step three is to consider the type of charging that you need to do. AC charging is generally quite a bit cheaper than DC rapid charging. So if the charging speed makes no difference, then use AC charging when it's available. This only works when you have time to do this, of course, such as if you're staying somewhere overnight or intending to have a long stop for a meal. But if you only need a bit, then you might be able to get that from an AC charger for less money. Step four is to learn which networks are cheaper and aim to use those in preference to the more expensive networks. The difference in price is pretty big at the moment, so this can make a reasonably dramatic difference to the cost of a charge. The networks I tend to avoid are Shell Recharge, BP Pulse, and these days GridServe. I also use Instavolt as little as I can, although they have some very handy sites. Shell Recharge and BP Pulse are both 85 pence per kilowatt hour for DC rapid charging. That's very much top end. Furthermore, they make you jump through hoops to use their AC chargers. So I just plan to go elsewhere. GridServe started out being very reasonably priced, but they raised their prices twice in 2023 and have suddenly started charging extra to use contactless payments at some of their busy sites. So this is no longer a network I aim to use. Some of the smaller networks are significantly cheaper than these. Rome, for example, are 73 pence per kilowatt hour for DC rapid chargers. Although to be fair, most of their sites only seem to offer AC charging. Smart Charge, the name for Sainsbury's charging network is 72 pence per kilowatt hour, which is also more reasonable and they are getting more prolific. Ionity are now 74 pence per kilowatt hour, 11 pence per kilowatt hour cheaper than those expensive ones I mentioned. Whilst they don't have a huge number of sites, they tend to be building quite large hubs. The smallest I've seen had six rapid chargers. Fastnet are pretty good, also at 74 pence per kilowatt hour. Their sites are quite nice. They are the only charge point operator who are currently putting canopies over their chargers so you don't get wet whilst plugging in if it's raining. MFG and MER are okay, 
They tend to be something like 78 or 79 pence per kilowatt hour. They seem to have got more expensive recently, but remain better than some top-end operators. Apple Green have gone up recently, I think. They are currently 79 pence per kilowatt hour, which still offers a bit of a saving over some of the others, including some grid serve sites with whom they share some of their sites. But pretty consistently, the cheapest are the Tesla public superchargers. Only a subset of Tesla sites are open to non-Tesla vehicles, and pricing varies by site and by time of day, but it's usually 65 pence per kilowatt hour or less, even at peak times. Be aware that there are a few catches at some of the Tesla superchargers. It's now a legal requirement that all public DC rapid chargers offer contactless payment unless they are for a single make of car. By my reckoning, all public Tesla superchargers should accept contactless, but not all of them do. You can tell before you get there. Look at the photos of the site and see what type of dispenser they have installed. These solid body dispensers have contactless card readers, but these older ones with a hole through the middle do not. Instead, you can only start a charging session at a site with one of these older dispensers using the Tesla app, so you need to download that and register all of your details, which is not the simple charging experience I crave. The cables on these older V2 and V3 superchargers are also very short, meaning you might end up wanting to take up multiple bays, which they ask you not to do. So avoiding the older dispensers is what I recommend, except for in emergencies perhaps. But there's another thing to be aware of. While you can start a charge using a contactless card at these new dispensers, I haven't found a way to stop charging from the touchscreen or with the card. So you need to know how to stop it from your car instead. This is one of the reasons I recommend that you learn how to stop charging from inside the car. That's something you need to have up your sleeve to have a worry-free public charging experience in case it's not obvious how to do it on any charge point you might come across. Step five is to use a roaming payment provider who can offer you a bit of a discount. Zapmaps, Zappay can sometimes offer a discount, but the one I like the most is Octopus Electroverse. Electroverse is pretty widely accepted at public chargers and they've managed to secure a discount with a number of networks, often about 8%, which is a pretty handy saving. Unfortunately, you only get the discounts if you're an Octopus Energy customer. You can get some convenience from Octopus Electroverse and their RFID card, but to get the cheapest rates, you also need to be an Octopus Energy customer, and sometimes on specific tariffs as well. If you'd like to give Octopus Electroverse a try, then my referral link is in the video description, as is the referral link to sign up with Octopus Energy if you'd like to do that. Both referrals offer you and me financial benefits that are listed with those links. Step six is network-specific apps. Some charge point operators want your personal details so as to be able to monitor you and send marketing to you, and so they offer cheaper charging using their app. The saving is usually two or three pence per kilowatt hour, so you have to decide whether being monitored, tracked and pestered is worth that to you. It's not usually for me. To be fair, some of the discounts are better than others. At a subset of sites, GridServe offer a discount of six pence per kilowatt hour through the app, but only at some sites, those overly expensive ones. Off-peak rates are starting to appear. In particular, the Instavolt off-peak rate is worth more than most. Instavolt is now 87 pence per kilowatt hour from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. But through the app, you get an off-peak rate of just 54 pence between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. That's a pretty amazing saving. Thanks to my viewer, Malcolm, for letting me know about that. The need to register in the app is enough of a barrier for me to hold off for now, but we'll see. There is an Instavolt site that is very convenient for me at junction 11 of the M40, but it's only really convenient when the Costa Coffee is open and therefore the toilets are available. And that's not the case when the cheap rate is active. However, the charges on many McDonald's sites that are Instavolt might be useful to me in that off-peak period. 
As an aside, some operators are so desperate to push their apps and get all of that juicy data about you, as well as to buy your loyalty, of course, that they are starting to refuse to tell you how much charging costs unless you use their app. How ridiculous. According to the wording of the legislation, this is legal. A mistake in the legislation, in my opinion. But it's a terrible user experience. So I will be avoiding those networks like the plague. I'm not having dozens of apps on my phone. By the way, if you encounter this app-based pricing, while they are allowed to require you to go to a web page or app to see the prices, they are not allowed to require you to register or sign in to see them. So if anyone does try that, then report them and stop using them. That is illegal. And if they are prepared to flout that law, then goodness knows what else they might do. Step seven on the ladder is memberships and subscriptions. A number of charge point operators offer memberships to their network that secure you reduced per kilowatt hour charging prices. Sometimes there is only one membership level, but sometimes there is more than one. The higher tier subscriptions, usually charged monthly, can get you more of a discount. Pay more to save more. The idea being that you can choose something that's right for the amount of charging you do with them. These memberships are usually for a single network and you need to decide how much you will use that network each month to determine if the saving covers that membership cost on a regular basis. I think you can usually stop and start a subscription of this type, so it might be that you pay for a month or two when you're doing more traveling and then pause it when it's not useful. You have to do your sums to work out if any one network is useful enough for you to do this. If you do a regular journey where your charging is on a single network, then it might be. The other scenario in which this might be beneficial is if you can't charge from home. Being able to reduce your everyday costs might make a membership very worthwhile if there's a single network that you will use to charge. Networks currently offering memberships include Tesla, Ionity, Fastned, Lidl, Total Energy, BP Pulse, ESB Energy and BEEV. Here's an on-screen summary of all the memberships and discounts I know of. Pause the video if you want to study that in detail. Finally, some roaming providers also offer subscriptions to get slight discounts. ZapPay Premium is one example, seemingly offering 5% discounts on all ZapPay transactions. There's also a service called Plug Surfing Plus that offers 20% reduction for a small subset of ChargePoint operators. That includes Instavolt, Ionity, Mer, and Osprey. But that too is based on the monthly subscription model. If you want to compare the prices of networks and memberships, there's a comparison website called Lecky that offers exactly that. That's to be found at lecky.net. Be careful that their information can sometimes be slightly confusing. They may not always be entirely clear as to whether the prices they are quoting are with or without membership. So go to the individual sites for clarification. Lecky handily provides links to those sites. So there are the steps we can take to save money on public charging. Which of those do I use? At the moment, I use the first five of these steps. It is common for me to need a top up on a long journey, but not need very much when I do charge. First of all, I avoid some charging by driving more efficiently. That's worked out a few times. When I do need to charge, I aim to put in just what I need, plus a bit of spare. Indeed, often I'm putting in just the spare. Four or five kilowatt hours often gets me home. The next step is choosing the cheapest type of charging, as AC charging is usually cheaper than DC rapid charging. My Renault Zoe can charge at 22 kilowatts, so AC charging isn't all that much slower than DC rapid charging if I'm at a 22 kilowatt AC charger, particularly at higher states of charge. And even at a seven kilowatt charger, I can often get the little I need quite quickly, and it can be quite a lot cheaper to do so. I wouldn't inconvenience myself in order to do this. If I need the speed, then I DC rapid charge, but sometimes AC charging is just as convenient for me. Next, we can be careful with our choice of networks, ignoring the most expensive. 
I used to use GridServe, but they are just too expensive now. My common go-tos at the moment are Tesla Superchargers and Sainsbury's Smart Charge. We might be able to use a roaming payment provider to get a bit of a discount. I use Octopus Electroverse, and because I'm an Octopus Energy customer using the Intelligent Go tariff at home, I get an 8% discount on a lot of AC and DC chargers, including at Sainsbury's. Next up, some networks offer discounts if you register with their apps. This is not one that I do at the moment, although Instavolt's off-peak rate might tempt me in the future. Some networks offer memberships, paid subscriptions, to get a cheaper rate. I don't do enough charging with a single network for that to be useful to me, and the registration needed to a network's app is often a barrier to entry for me anyway. Each app I register with brings another chance of my data being exposed in a data breach. Since I have to provide payment card information for a charging app, that's a pretty big risk. Software developers are very rarely as good at security as they should be. Remember that there is a comparison site called Lecky that can help us understand what's cheapest. Prices change, so the occasional revisit of that can help us keep abreast of the changes in the market. I shall certainly be keeping an eye on that over the next few months, as some of the prices are on the rise yet again at the time of recording, in May 2025. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. Let's keep the information flowing in the comments section. In particular, I'd like to hear your experiences. What methods do you use to save money on public charging, both in the UK and wider afield? If you've liked the video, then it's a big help to me if you click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.